Stole rats. All right, guys, a little update. I've uh, been pretty busy outside of the project, so I didn't get a whole lot done, but I got the wings mounted up. I made these uh, stands to help me with that since uh, I'm here by myself most of the time. Uh, currently working on getting these number one ribs in place there and the butt rib. So uh, fitting the tank right now and let me bring that bring the camera around here. The uh, outside edges of the tank, you can see this line of the uh, fiberglass is not straight at all. So it has to be sanded to fit so I get an even, even gap and then I can move that rib over into place. Uh, I already did this side, it's got a pretty even gap. And that will be high salt into place after uh, when I glue, glue the tank in. So uh, for today, uh, I just finished building up these uh, stands. Uh, I did that yesterday actually. And you can see the um, bottom of the stand I'm also going to use as the wing uh, rotisserie. So I built a little uh, PVC setup for that. Those will go in the uh, end of the spars and allow me to rotate the wing. <clears throat> a little hint on that. Uh, if you're using two inch um, PVC, the diameter, outer diameter of the pipe is exactly the same as the inner diameter of the spar and therefore they won't fit in there. So what I did with this one is cut a slit that allows the pipe to compress a little bit and then it slides right into the uh, spars. <clears throat> also made this uh, stand where I can move these blocks and adjust the height because right now I just have it sitting on the sawhorses, but if I want to move the airplane up or down, uh, these stands can go all the way up to uh, get it seven feet. Okay, so I'm positioning this number one rib, and I ran into a question I had to look up on the internet, and I'm going to include it in the build video so you guys don't have to do the same research. So the question that I found on the team Kit Fox forum was answered. The same exact question was, can I move this rib? the number one rib this way to give more spacing for the butt rib the answer is no you have to place this rib at 35 and a half inches for the flapper on hinge spacing and what you want to do then is if you have a tight fit with your butt rib over this um, rear spar attachment bolt fitting is to just cut the the uh, the butt ribs top cap or make a little sanded relief so that bolt can go in and out there. Hopefully that helps uh, you guys that are doing this so you don't have to look it up on the Team Kit Fox forum. Okay, one of the things you gotta do is uh, cut a relief in the uh, number one spar where the doublers are on the spar at the root of the wing. So you gotta kinda grind that out there and there and then make a little bit of a adjustment to the tips there and that's just to uh, clear these doublers on the spar so you can see this one's already in place so it's been done all right now that I've notched it you can see the notch to clear the the doubler a little notch over here as well uh, I slid the number one rib on to the spars reattached the wing and then measured from the third to the first, 35 and a half inches exactly. And that's from center to center, or you can take the tape from the outside to the outside. Either way, it's 35 and a half. So I will now move that over and use some Scotch Brite to clean up or scuff up the spar a little bit and then put it back in place, remeasure, and then apply the high saw glue. And that will be, uh, both number one ribs will then be glued in place. You gotta wait overnight for that to dry. Um, and then I'll probably do the butt ribs tomorrow. So while I get that done and glued, uh, I got some time left today. I'll probably look at doing the, um, see if I can locate there's a piece of aluminum that goes inside this edge 
of the butt rib that will later be used to attach the windshield. So I'll probably locate that um, part, because I don't know where the heck it is in all my parts, and get those um, cut to size and possibly glue that up and let that dry overnight also. All right guys, so after putting that uh, number one rib in place, went ahead and, and did the, the butt rib placement. Um, got some advice not to uh, drill into the post on the frame until the wing's covered to get this space with the fabric with perfect. So I can move it in and out just a little bit. So I'll leave that undrilled until the wing's uh, been covered. Um, I did post a question on the Kit Fox owner's forum and got an answer actually from Brandon at Kit Fox. Um, I'll, I'll show that video from my iPhone that I used to post the question. But a question for you, those that have built a seven, I'm trying to install the butt rib and you can see the spacing is way off from the butt rib to number one when it's touching the bracket that holds it to the airframe. Um, up front, there's plenty of room, but as it tapers back, it has to overlap. I mean, it's way off front and back. So my question is, do you guys just grind these back <clears throat> on these brackets so you can move the butt rib in line with them, the number one? Because all these brackets are the, are the same size, so it would taper back inward um, not sure why it's like that but they're it's like that on both sides front or left and right so if you guys are running that same problem shoot me a uh, a comment and let me know if, if shaving these down to move that in is what you guys did thank you basically this spacing wasn't uh, going to be even using the standard length um, brackets so on the new um, manual I guess newer than the one I have new revision it tells you you have to cut down these brackets because they're too long um, to keep that gap so I had to cut about a, a quarter inch off of this one a little less off as I move forward and then this last one uh, is the full length one so they were all that length to begin with now Unfortunately, I had already pre-drilled them, um, so there are a couple holes on the top that I won't be using. Uh, I cut off one of them, so it's really only this middle one has a, a little bit of a hole uh, towards the, the root of the, the bracket that I won't be using. So anyway, uh, the, the butt ribs on both sides are now in place and spaced properly. Um, I've just got them held in place with Clecos. For now in case any little adjustments need to be done and now i'm going to move on to the tanks the wing tanks i've got the uh, right one fit it's uh, over in the storage cabinet i've got to fit the left one and what i mean by fitting it it's this spot right here with the doubler um, the tank doesn't sit right front and back on that so you have to relieve that and then the edge of the tank this one's not as bad as the right one as far as the the gap you can see this gap here out kind of curves in um, they're not straight edge so you got to tape them off and sand them i may have showed that on the other tank um, the next step is to put all the um, you know final fittings for the sight tube and the finger screens and then um, there's this attached uh, pamphlet that talks about how to rinse them out. Hey, good morning guys, back at it here. Today I am mounting the jury struts. Uh, there's been some question about how to do the alignment. So the directions are pretty clear. So let me show you what I did here. Now, first of all, you wanna wrap the uh, lift struts with some tape to protect them when you put these clamps around it. And then um, I have the prefab kit, so here's the, the bracket. Uh, so I, I go ahead, went ahead and put the bolts through on all those. Got them snug so I could position the jury strut. And it's about uh, from the back spar from the root 
out. You want to start at 53 inches. I ended up coming in, it's about 52 and a half for me. Um, the other thing you want to check when you get it in position is that it's not binding right here. I went ahead and tightened these already because I'm ready to drill, but leave these loose and make sure you're not binding right there. And then take a string and tape it at the top, and then you can look at this string and make sure it's straight and the front lift strut is not bowing up or down at all. So that is straight. The other thing you want to do is take a plumb bob. That's what this guy is here. Get it to stop swinging here. And you want to position that. I just did it up against the inside of the bracket. Bring it back and you can visually align it. Swing it again. So you want to visually align it, just kind of eyeball. So you make that back bar disappear by you know, moving your head left and right. And that, that uh, string should be straight up and down through that bar. In other words, the bar shouldn't be leaning this way or that way. Now what's interesting is if you take a square to the strut, it's not perpendicular to the, to the square. There's a, it kind of tapers outwards. And that's where I was a little confused about, you know, they want you, you'd think you'd want it perpendicular to the strut. But what the directions say is you want it perpendicular to the aircraft floor. So the aircraft right now is level. You can see I'm level left and right and fore and aft. And so the reason for the difference is the dihedral in the wing. So the wing's angled up ever so slightly. So that's going to move your square out a little bit because that spar's tapering up. So if you want it perpendicular to the floor, you're going to have it just a little bit angled in from the spar. Hopefully that makes sense. In other words, use the plumb bob and not a square um, to the spar. That's according to the directions. So um, I went ahead and drilled the front one and got some Cuecos in place. Um, they say to use a three inch um, pipe clamp to hold them in position. Didn't have any of those lying around, but I did have some Ziploc ties or grip lock ties, sorry. Um, those work great. So they're reusable. I can just undo those when I'm done. So I'll go ahead and drill the back one and I already did the uh, right side wing. And so then the next step is to bond those to the spar and then rivet them in place. Um, also learned a, a kind of why you use flux uh, going through the manual, I didn't really understand when, when you should use flux, why you're using flux in the high saw adhesive. Uh, Rich Kimball was, uh, he explained it to me. So anytime you have dissimilar metals, in this case, you got steel on aluminum. Um, the flux is a barrier. Those little micro balloon, uh, flux particles are a barrier between the metals and the glue. And it will prevent any sort of long-term dissimilar metal corrosion. Um, they call for it sometimes between um, aluminum and wood also. It's not as necessary because you're not going to get a corrosion issue there. But this application here will be dissimilar metals. So this high stall mix will need to have the flux added to it. All right guys, follow up on the jury strut mount brackets. They're in place and uh, glued and riveted. Front and rear on both sides. And the next step after that was to uh, put in the false ribs around the lift strap bracket. So just finished doing that. Um, three on top, only two on the bottom. You leave this one out. Um, really nothing tricky about that that I can really give you any pointers on. You basically uh, just follow the instructions on that one and make sure the spacing's even. What I did is just took the tape measure and measured the spacing on the, on the next bait over from it. They're actually all the same on the quick build one from the factory. So I just used that same spacing and then marked them off on here and then that worked out real good. So that side's done um, and the other side is also done. 
again with the west strip or the jury strip brackets are in place and the ribs top and bottom so for those of you who are interested in building a plane kind of want to know like how time consuming it is those items took me all day so i did the jury strut brackets and the false ribs uh, started about nine o'clock this morning it's now four and took about an hour and a half off in the middle to cook a brisket or throw it on the trigger and have some lunch so i'm gonna go have a beer focus on that brisket and tomorrow is the wing tanks uh, i gotta slosh those out get them clean and then uh work on the fitment on this left one or I got the right one fitted and then um, all the fittings on the I'll go over it tomorrow Good morning guys uh, third day in a row working on the plane getting hopefully I was gonna get more done than I am but uh, it's all pretty time-consuming so uh, right now what I'm doing is I put a coat of varnish on the uh, all the wood parts that I put in last night I'm going to do a second coat this morning, and while I have the varnish mixed up, I'm going to put a coat on the um, extended baggage floorboards. So uh, I'm using the polyfiber epoxy varnish EV400, which is a two-part mixed with the 410, and can be reduced down. I've got the E500 in this little bottle, which stores a little better. I'm going to put a second coat on today. Um, it takes 30 minutes for the um, two parts to activate. So I've mixed it up. I've got about five minutes to go here on that. And then I'll start applying it. The reason I'm doing that now is when I go to put the fuel tank in, you can't get to the inside or the outside of the number one rib anymore. So getting that varnished up now. And then I can drop tanks in and get those um, siliconed in and start working on the trailing edge. All right, guys, uh, working on these fuel tanks now. Uh, the factory recommends that we wash them out, um, rinse them with acetone. Um, so I followed the guidelines on uh, how to do that on the first rinse. They said to use this green masking tape. Uh, this is 100% acetone dissolvable um, stickiness. So the tape falls off almost immediately once you start sloshing it. So uh, I went to duct tape instead. Um, doesn't work real well either. So I don't really know what other tape to try. Maybe some packing tape, but pretty sure they're all just dissolvable uh, glue. The glue is dissolvable by acetone. So anyway, um, you go ahead and just plug up the three holes on the, uh, what's this one, the left tank. Uh, there's four holes in the right tank. Plug them up, put a quart of acetone in there, seal off the top, shake it around, rinse it real good, and then pour it out into a uh, paint strainer. You can see some of the debris that came out of that last tank. Uh, not a ton, but uh, worth doing, I'm sure. Um, so you're supposed to do it three times. I've done each one once, and then I gotta let them dry for an hour in between. So this could be a long process today, and I really want to get to gluing these into the wing. So um, I'll probably wait an hour, do them again, and then make a run to town for some errands I got to do. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to find all the parts that go into the into the wing tank. I just want to show you, after cleaning the tanks out, that's all the debris that was in there. See that right there. So it's worth doing. I mean, that's not going to clog your, your finger screen, but you can see all the hair in there. That's all the um, fiberglass hair. So there is a significant amount of dust and, and debris in there that's worth uh, rinsing it out for. All right, so to recap the day. <laughs> Fuel tanks still aren't in, but they are clean. And um, just finished installing all the fittings on the uh, right tank. Spent most of the day prepping these tanks. Um, the most time consuming thing was coming up with the NPT um, pipe taps. Uh, these, I was able to find them at uh, Ace Hardware. Uh, I do have a tap and die set and I'm gonna figure out why that wasn't working. 
uh, but the spacing is different. There's a dash 18, dash 18, and dash 27. Um, that's three eighths, quarter inch, and one eighth. So add that to your tool list for the fuel tanks. You only need the quarter inch for the one uh, hole that's on the right side tank return line. And I'm using two gallons of acetone and rinse the tanks three times. I did two rinses, then I tapped these, which created more dust inside the uh, inside the, t the holes. So I did a real good rinse on the last one and then let them dry. So that one's done. I gotta put the uh, all the fittings in on the see on the on the left side still. And other than that, I was able to uh, do a little work on the number one rib. Right here is the little relief you need to put in so that the fuel line can pass through. Um, and also, just a, a pointer for you guys, the butt rib at the back here where it's, where it's cut out, um, you want to swing the wing all the way back because this, this spar may actually contact that. And in my case, it did a little bit on both sides, especially up where the doubler is. Um, so you got to just sand a little relief on the butt rib back in. Didn't say anything about swinging the wing to check that. And if you had it all installed and done, and then you go to swing your wing and there's not enough clearance, then it'd be really hard to get in there and do that. Or really hard to do that. You'd almost have to take the butt rib out. All right, guys, real quick, I just want to wrap up this video. I know it was really long. I appreciate you hanging on till the end. Uh, I did finish the trailing edges on both the left and right wing. That pretty much completes what I need to have done with the wing attached to the airplane. So it's ready to come off. Um, so in this video, we covered uh, doing the um, wing tank installation, the false ribs, the wing, uh, the uh, jury strut mounts right here, um, the number two uh, rib. I don't know if I covered too much about putting that in, and it's not actually glued on the bottom yet. I'm going to wait till the wing's off, and I can turn it upside down to get that shaped the same as the number one and the number three, so it's a nice even airfoil. And then I'll put the false ribs in when that's off the wing. To do that upside down wasn't, didn't seem like a, a smart idea. Um, then the trailing edge, the butt rib, you know, those all went in. So there's a lot in this video. Uh, I was hoping to get the wing done and ready to cover in this video. Um, but there's still, I think I'm about halfway there, really. And I'm, that's probably being generous. So the wing comes off. Got to do the leading edge, the composite leading edge. It's up there, all the fiberglass pieces. They need to be bonded to the front. Then I need to do the flaperons, which will um, be interesting. That sounds like a pretty big process. Still have to do the wing tips and then all the plumbing and wiring. So the wiring for the wing tip lights, I've got the aero LEDs that are going in. And then the pedo with the um, angle of attack indicator, I need to run two pedo plumbing tubes out to that. And then I still need to buy the mount for the pedo tube itself. So. There's still quite a bit to do with the wing, so I'm not gonna cover it in this video. I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I'm gonna make a wing build number two video for the rest of that stuff once I accomplish that. Apologize for the month long interruption in posting the build videos. Um, you can see from the other one, videos I have posted with the uh, Alvord trip and the Reno Air Race uh, PRS training that I have been busy and haven't had as much time to put hands on the airplane. So uh, thanks for hanging in there and being patient about this update. And I will um, get to work trying to get this finished and ready to cover. And as soon as I get the wing completed, I'll put up another video. Uh, I'll title it uh, episode nine wing build or wing video number two or something. So anyway, hit the subscribe. Uh, share these videos if you can with people that might be interested or that are thinking about building a plane. It doesn't have to be a Kit Fox. I just think it's a good representation of what's involved. Uh, you know, you show up and you see a beautiful airplane that someone built and you don't really appreciate how much goes into it until you try to do it yourself. So hopefully by sharing these videos, people who are thinking about doing it know what they'll, they'll be able to know what they're getting into a little better. So uh, yeah, share these videos with people you think would be interested and uh, I'll look forward to sharing the next one. Alright guys, I want to leave you with some scenes from a uh, trip out to Alvor Desert. If you haven't watched the video, I'll provide a link here at the end. Uh, check it out. It was a great trip. Had a real good time uh, visiting with all friends from all over the place. And we had a bit of an adventure with the weather. 
So uh, take a look at that video and uh, follow along the adventure.